Hey, this is Chase with Houston Frogs. I have a few tissue cultures here with me today that I want to show you. Uh, these were all cultured in our laboratory here in Houston, Texas. Uh, a lot of people ask me, well, why are tissue cultures so great? Why should I use tissue cultured mosses, for instance, over mosses that are collected in the wild? And today I'm actually going to tell you some of the really cool benefits of using tissue cultures. I'm going to show you some of these guys with the lids off. So tissue cultures, um, not all of you know this, some of you do, uh, is basically where you take a plant, um, a singular plant of a particular type, and you sterilize it to where it is literally just the plant cells that are left. There is no bacteria, there's no fungi, there's no other competing plants, it is literally just what you want. Um, and the really cool thing about that is the plants, when they're grown in these sterile conditions on this nutrient agar, so it's actually a gel derived from seaweed that has a particular nutrient profile in it. We have different nutrient profiles depending on what we're trying to grow. Um, these are actually proprietary formulas that we've come up with here in the lab. Uh, so those actually help to accelerate plant growth. It gives them all of the nutrients that they need uh, to be able to survive and to thrive in these little perfect environments. And again, since they don't have any kind of competition whatsoever, they're not having to fight off bacteria, fungi, uh, competing with other plants, they are able to grow a lot faster, which is pretty cool because uh, typically a lot of these mosses are relatively slow growing. You can accelerate growth depending on the nutrient profiles you have, your lighting, things like that. Um, but in tissue culture, again, they grow relatively quickly. Now, uh, for you on the consumer end, um, that's not something that's going to be a really big deal because once you get these plants, yes, you could take this, set on the shelf, let it grow out a lot more if you'd like before putting it in a terrarium, vivarium, or aquarium. But when you get it, it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, but the really cool thing is, unlike other uh, plants that are not in tissue culture, uh, when you get tissue cultures, you only get the plants. You only get what you want. Uh, oftentimes, wild collected mosses uh, have pests in them. They're going to have fungi that you don't want. They're going to have bacteria that you don't want. They're going to have perhaps snail eggs. They're going to have perhaps nematodes or even uh, eggs of things like nematodes. They're going to have mites. Uh, these tissue cultures are completely 100% free of that. Because if we were to have a single mite in here, if we were to have a single mold spore, a single bacterial cyst, then it would absolutely 100% take over this culture. The plants would fail and we know immediately that they were contaminated. So that's the really cool thing about these. When you get these plants, you know that they are 100% sterile and ready to go at vivarium. No quarantine needed. Uh, the only thing that you need to do is you need to wash the nutrient gel off. And the reason you need to rinse the nutrient gel off is because, of course, just like these plants love the cigar gel, so do bacteria, fungi, things like that. So when you get these, you just wash off the gel, you take the plants, you put them in your vivarium after you wash them off, and they will grow just like they're in here, not as fast, but they're going to turn out beautifully in, again, terrarium, vivarium, aquarium. Um, now that's the other thing. So again, you gotta make sure you wash this gel off because again, Bacteria and fungi love it. So if you did leave this gel on, the plants will continue to grow on it, but you're also, again, going to have proliferation of fungi and bacteria on it too. So it's very important that you wash that off uh, because right now it's sterile, but once you open these, and that's the whole trick, once you open these, now I'm in a sterile lab environment in front of a flow hood with multiple layers of filtration down to 0.1 microns. If you don't have your own laboratory, a very, very expensive advanced laboratory, you cannot open these, I don't care where it is, you cannot open these without them being contaminated. Now you can open them as still air box and lower your chances of contamination, but it's going to be very, 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 very difficult. Um, so you don't want to open these, and again, we put on the front, do not open until ready to use. You don't want to open these until you're ready to use them because within about 48 hours, 72 hours, you are going to see some growth of uh, different bacteria and fungi on these because it's all around us um, if you don't wash that gel off uh, and use these plants as you're supposed to. Now, I'm gonna talk about a few of these. 
one of my favorites uh, is this Taxphilium Flame. This is Flame Moss. So I'm gonna open this up real quick so you can see what it looks like. So a lot of people use Java Moss, and Java Moss is great, and we do sell Java Moss as well. We culture a lot of it here in the lab. I really like this Flame Moss. Now this Flame Moss is actually one of the fastest growing mosses that we have. That's about two weeks of growth. Um, Java moss grows about half as fast. And then at Vivarium, it's growing to grow a little bit thicker, a little bit taller than Java as well. And again, a short amount of time. So if you want something that's going to uh, take over relatively quickly and not in a nuisance type way, but in a way that's going to actually cover, um, you know, logs, uh, sticks, rocks, whatever you have in the vivarium, uh, a background that you want to coat in. As long as you keep this uh, flame moss moist, like the other mosses, as long as you have a misting system that's going off, as long as you keep up with the misting, keep up with the humidity, then it's absolutely going to coat everything that you want in a beautiful, lush, green uh, carpet of moss. And the really cool thing is uh, it can grow in lower light. So if you don't have a lot of light in your vivarium, if you have places that are perhaps a little bit shaded out, it can still actually grow in those areas and it's going to get a darker green with having lower light. Now, uh, Taiwan moss is very similar. Uh, it's not going to be as fast growing, but it's going to grow at a similar pace. And it looks a little bit fuzzier. I'll show you what that looks like. So a little bit fuzzier, you can see where it's also growing into the nutrient agar there, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but again, it's going to be pretty similar. It's really cool to have a combination of them because then you have the flame moss next to Taiwan moss and then you see sort of the difference between them. I love to have a variety of mosses in my vivariums myself. Um, so now we're going to go to the Tricularia gramifolia. So this is actually a carnivorous plant. A lot of people don't realize that. It has little tiny traps. It actually go in the soil. If you do have uh, nematodes and things like that, it'll actually capture them and eat them, which is pretty cool. Again, you can grow this submersed in an aquarium or you can grow it uh, in a vivarium in a moist place uh, or in a terrarium. It's really cool. It's like curly little grass. Then we're going to go on to the next one. So this is one of my favorites, actually. Uh, this is Moslem tenarum. Uh, it's uh, typically referred to as a liverwort. There's a lot of liverworts out there. So it's a bryophyte but it's a bit different from moss. And as you can see, i to open this up. It has these cool tentacles. Now in an aquarium, it's going to look very much like, uh, a lot of people refer to it as a seaweed look. But in a terrarium or a vivarium, again, as long as it's kept moist, and these work amazing in paludariums, by the way, growing up from the water. Here you can see it's terrestrial phase and it's aquatic phase. Um, so when you look at these real close, you can actually see a really cool purple coloration to them as well. See that purple at the base? So this moss limb tenarum is actually pretty quick growing. It will grow in vivarium. It will coat uh, the substrate itself. It'll grow onto rocks. It'll grow onto sticks, which is pretty cool. Biggest thing is just keeping it moist. But uh, this is actually one of my favorites here. And these uh, work well in dart frog vivariums. They don't work as well with uh, larger dart frogs because larger dart frogs sometimes trample and break them. But if you have a little tentacle that breaks off, it'll actually grow uh, into a new plant, which is pretty cool. All right, so then we're gonna talk about the Plagiomnium uh, athene. So this is actually a very uncommon moss. It's also referred to as pearl moss. Again, this is something that it's a little bit tougher to grow in uh, aquariums, honestly, but it grows really well in terrariums and vivariums. Um, it looks really cool, especially if it starts climbing up your background. Uh, now this pearl moss is a little bit slower growing. It's not gonna grow near as fast as what flame moss or Taiwan moss does. It's not going to grow as fast as Java moss. Probably one of the slowest growing mosses that we have here that we're working with. That's why we don't have as many available. Uh, but it's really rewarding though, because it's just a really cool little moss with these tiny little petals that you can see. So I really like it personally. The last one that we're going to talk about today, and uh, we are working with quite a few tissue cultures here, but um, 
we're just gonna go through six today so we don't make this uh, video too long. Uh, this is some Bucci, uh, Bucci Kadang particularly. It has this really cool, almost like a bronzish, bronzish purple coloration. Um, and again, this grows well in aquariums, submerged, or in paludariums, uh, where it's coming out of the water slightly, uh, or even in vivariums, again, in moist places where it's not really going to be drying out particularly. Um, it stays low, it doesn't grow too tall, and it has this sort of bushy effect to it with these cool crinkled leaves. So again, one of my favorite uh, types of bucci to use. There's a lot out there. This is one particular that we're working with here that we'll be offering soon. But anyways, guys, um, that's it for today. Again, I just wanted to go through uh, those different types of tissue cultures that we offer here at Houston Frogs. Um, we have about uh, 20 different types in our collection at the moment. And we'll be offering these uh, on the website. I think we have maybe eight or nine on the website right now. And we'll be offering more as we have them available. We're just trying to produce them here, keep up with demand. But anyways, guys, uh, if y'all have any questions, feel free to call anytime. This is Chase with Houston Frogs. I hope you have a great day. Thank you.